everybody to the LEC, um, where it is time. Welcome back, everybody, to the LEC, where it is time for our match of the week, MDK versus KC. You can spell match of the week however you like. But remember, we're in the beginning of the season, so anything can really happen. And I'm personally really excited because it is KC versus MDK and two of the best fan bases that we have had in the LEC. And we know that the KC fans are also um, in full swing, also in the watch party uh, over that Kamado setup. So thank you so much for that. And to look at their paths of both these teams in the LEC, we set up a little quiz about the LVP versus the Super Liga. We have two teams. We have Broxa versus Odoane on one side, and we have Lore and GB on the other. Wesh. Wesh. Let's go. Team France. Um, to make this a little spicy. Oh. You didn't see that, did you? No, I did not see the, okay. the, the answer, but it might be rigged. Okay. Um, are you so, cheating? What you are cheating. The loser should do something, the losing team, yeah. I think. So do you know what they should do in case they lose? Okay, so if they lose, I want them to put on a little skit for uh, the K because they're playing for the Spanish team, right? So yeah. I want them to put a little skit for KC and then Flamenco in Flamenco front of Flamenco in front yeah. of KC. Fans, players will see. <laughs> okay, cool. I, do can't, you have I can't wait. You're going to have something that they, they have to do if they lose? Well, it only seems fitting that if you have to do a Spanish dance, that they should be doing a French dance in All front right. of MDK in case we win, which the we Kong probably Kong? will. Okay, of course we will. great. Right. Uh, excuse me, of course, I said LVP versus Superliga. I meant LFL versus Superliga earlier. That will be the topic of the quiz. Question number one. Oof. If you say it, shout it. How many different teams have won the LFL since 2019? We both can answer. Everyone can answer. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Just answer a few. Wait, uh, three? Incorrect. What? How? Five. Oh, no, no, two. Incorrect. Two. Two. Incorrect. What? Oh. Yes. One fire, 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 fire. Uh, He nice. was different yeah. teams. No, no. no. Oh, no. KC and KC Blue are counted as the same team. The winners are KC Blue, LDLC, Misfits, Misfits Premier, Premier, and Gamers, Gamers Origin. Origin. I forgot Gamers Origin. We're so Origin. good about the LFL. Wow. No, but like he was slightly earlier. Yeah, yeah. He was. slightly earlier. Yes, he had it. Yeah. It, no. Yeah. Yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, it's question number two. Who are the five players on the most spam. recent roster to win the LVP Superliga? Okay, uh, wait. No, oh, the super. No, I don't know. <laughs> Do five players. I don't even see yes. Say? Oh, uh, Carlson. Oh uh, yeah, yes. Um, 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 Jack Spectra, Whiten, and who's the mid laner? Who was the mid laner? Oh. Certus. I'm not sure if that's correct. Can Certus came in in the last week. You have four out of five. I think. No, I got all of them. Oh, you yeah. 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 That's actually. I mean, my impressive. boy Zerus is playing there, so good. I'm glad about this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I actually want to kind of give him two points for that, but I can't because it's so impressive. Uh, but one, one. Question three: Which player has the most LFL titles? Saiken. He he I said mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty. Sounds quick. correct. I mean, it sounds way uh, too. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Um, I'm going to give you times. the point. I'm pretty sure. Four times. Baker doesn't You don't get extra points for that, but that's fine. Okay. They're correct. Two to one. Is it correct? Is it not correct? It was what? Ike! <laughs> what? Okay, that's actually crazy, but it also makes sense since Ike? he's been there for so long. Yeah. Really? I mean, I don't know. I'm into I it. Love, I, I love you. You're like Reddit. You are so confidently wrong. I, I absolutely love it. Keep Question the number four. Man. Only one team has gone winless in the LFL. Which? Uh, like in the whole history. Uh, Mirage? Mirage? Yes, ever. Yeah, ever. it sounds like, Mirage? sounds like something Mirage would do. Is it Mirage? Is that correct? See, I only no, that's incorrect. I, LDLC. No, no Winless, way. they want the split. <laughs> LDLC? No? Easy Dream? But, yes, correct. Oh, let's go. That's what I'm that's talking either. about. Yeah, I'm sure easy Dream. Let's easy go. Dream. Very, very nice. Question five. Targamas played for three different teams in the LFL. Which? This is... K4. What? I'm looking at you, bro. Case, three different teams? <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Is it the KC Blue thing again? I guess KC, KC Blue? No, he didn't. I don't know. No, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm just KC. running into well, I'm just looking at you here because I cast it once with a fell. You were... I don't know. Not to put any pressure. Oh my God. No, okay, one of the teams was in the ULCS do, do, we, do we get points if we snipe just one team? ULCS? Okay, the first one who names one of the correct teams. KC. J <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I actually want to know about the rest. All right. Gentlemates. Uh, Vitality TV. Yeah, Vitality TV misses from no hearing. <laughs> wow. wow. It's three to one. Question six. Sorry. Only one team has won the EMEA Masters more than Casey. once. Casey. Sorry, I'm right there. Because I just wanted to be faster than here. Like, I want to win this. Uh, K4, 
KC. There's one answer that you need to spam yeah, every I mean, time, and that's it. We didn't say it. Let's to the last question. So um, okay, are you willing to take whoever wins this last question wins the whole thing or not? That like, depends. Yeah. 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 Is this an MVP? Uh, uh, is I don't know. Okay. Yes or no? Oh, you read the question before? I'll look for you to guide. We could do it. The question is, which two Spanish teams have won the EMEA Masters? Do you take the gamble or not? All or nothing? Yes, she took it. Okay, Team Reddix and Movistar Riders. Wow, would you look at that? No, what? What? Origin There's origin heretics. in there. Origin heretics. Oh, uh, no. Wait, what? Origin Movistar Riders. One of them is correct. Origin Movistar Riders. No, heretics for sure. Yeah, yes. heretics what is sure. the other one? What is Wait, the other did team? Mad the Mad Lions. Lions. Did they correct. Mad Lions? Yeah. Correct. Was that not what I said in the beginning? Did no. You? Did you? What, what did I say? I'm not I sure. You said uh, Movistar Riders. <laughs> this is doomed. Oh, <laughs> right. Sorry, Mad Lions. Yeah, my yes, bad. Yes, my yes, yes. We went over time. Yes. Uh, they're the winners. They will be dancing flamenco at some point in time. But it's time for our match of the week. Are you warmed up? I am. Let's let's head into it. <laughs> as long as they're dancing, I'm excited. And clearly, the KC fans are too. K Core fans, of course, showing up strong to come out as viewing parties in East Bot Paris. Blue wall there. Loud and proud. Probably not just because of the quiz where Odawamne and Broxa seemed completely and utterly lost. I mean, for pro players, they really don't know much about gaming, really, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very not you guys equipped for in checks, notes, <laughs> or regional leagues. Let me check. Ah, uh, yes, Romanian and Experts. Danish. Ah, okay. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not in the realm of expertise. We are getting ready for KC versus MDK. It's going to be an exciting one. We saw some promising things from KC in the early game yesterday. Same for Mad Lions, but they both find themselves at a loss. Dragos. Um, of course, the desk is having a bit of fun. We're going to be having a bit of fun with this game as well. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. expecting new champions. I'm expecting some fun narrative, right? Spain versus France, always a heated rivalry. And also, every time we see these two teams play, it's usually a banger, Dracos. It's always spicy. Again, despite KC's, you know, lackluster year so far, they're one and one with Mad Lions. Koi, see who can get it in the best of three regular season. For now, just about taking it one game at a time. Mad Lions Koi, of course, got a little creative versus G2, but in the late game, that Camille really took over for KC. Some early game signs of life as well, but we're really able to bring it home. But we'll see how the drafts set them up. Uh, I like the Ivern band coming out. That champion has looked uh, very powerful in the last two days of games. The question is, will we see any further AD carry bands? Senna being taken away by Mad Lions Koi. Upset bringing that one out yesterday. No, the Rumble actually going to be taken off so far as to Ash. We haven't seen any Caitlyn. I was told she was OP. She did get a bit of an adjustment. Were you told by Rob? Was I? No. Because was... Rob has one clip of him getting one tapped as Nami by a five item Caitlyn from two patches ago. <laughs> and anyone who, who asks gets to see the clip. I see, I and it's see. the immediate argument for Caitlyn is strong. And she is strong. Well, Obviously adjusted. Pros, not as much, at least in Europe. Um, the Ash, though, response is going to be from Mad Lions. The Talia is first picked from Carmen Cole. I think Vladi had a pretty strong performance on it yesterday uh, for his debut game on the LEC stage. Working well with Closer and Kana. No first pick Jax. Not worthy yeah. really priority on the Jax this time around. Sejuani. Star startling. <laughs> Sejuani Ash, though. Bit of a frowly odd vibe we've got from the Mad Lions. Great utility already from their uh, yeah. composition. Glacial comp. TFT set one throwback. But obviously, steady, reliable, have the luxury of using the Ash to flex pick if you so choose. Yesterday, Mirwin and Mad Lions set him up for success to get that TF first pick. It really did not pan out, so we'll see how they adjust in terms Jinx of his Rell. top lane pool. And Jinx would be an easy lock-in with Nautilus off the board. Rel certainly would rise in prio. You keep the Talia as a flex pick too. You can move her between mid and jungle. Keep your options open, depending on where you want to go with the rest of your draft. So far, Carmine Court keeping things relatively safe. I think the beauty of Jinx into Ash as well is that if the Ash does happen to be played in AD carry, you have a nice range scaling matchup that you can play yep. in on the bot side of the map. So, And I wonder if Carmine have been taking some lessons from BDS, maybe a few early swaps to get through some potentially rough laning phases. But it's going to be the Rek'Sai once more for Closer, confirming that the Talia will be put into the jungle, uh, mid lane rather. 
<laughs> Sorry, there's a picture of the picture of Vladdy behind is really funny. It looks like it should be printed on a candle and sold to the church. That's <laughs> 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 great stuff. Well, <laughs> oddly specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, you know. <laughs> anyway, so the Rex side locked in, and I think you're right that Vladdy had a good day yesterday, so I like seeing that setup for him and closer as well. It feels like uh, KC clearly have some comfort picks when it comes to mid jungle repeating Ooh. some of those but the leblanc now coming in for Fescawi. confident pick yeah and he's had a lot of really highlight moments on this champion overall and again uh, leblanc on the dash in it is a dash the recall back on the distortion is a blink so it will not be affected by the unraveled earth yeah i mean uh, leblanc is favored into many matchups one of the big things he struggles with is wave clear especially during the early levels which means that talia can play for that early prio but depending on how you use her w can have a massive impact on how the matchup plays out for leblanc now as we enter our second phase of bands we want to hear from you at home if you're listening if you're watching go to at lec on x we go on twitter to tell us who do you think the better AD carry is, Upset or Supa? We'll check in on those answers. Go to LEC, tweet on X. On X. You can X us. You can, you can, you can, <laughs> you can Z at us. X us up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we want to know, we really want to know. I feel like we've aged five far. years in the last five Bro, minutes. I, yes. <laughs> Z at us. Upset or Supa, who is better? <laughs> TikTok us, Instagram. We'll find it wherever you put it, but yeah. Twitter perfect, preferably. We'll check in in-game to see what you have to say, depending on the pace of game, of course, as a lot of bot lane bans are coming through. Varus off the board, the Braum, the Rakan taken away. Some targeting at Targamus and Supa, we'll have to see what he and Alvaro want to prioritize. Varus being kind of makes a lot of sense. I wonder if Carmine will also remove the Rel. Made it all the way through the draft. My line's setting up for... Well, I mean, it depends whether or not they want to put the Ash in AD carry. Maybe they want to keep it flexible. You could just go for something like Cassante right now. Maybe even something more aggressive, Camille, if you want to. Soraka. It's just a hub at Dracos. You know, you can't be bought into those things. I mean, when it's Mad Lions Koi, I'm always bought in, but it will be something. I was almost going to talk about The that we talked over. about, maybe. Hey, the rail that you talked about. More cavalry coming through for the so side of Mad Lions So now with this car line. Do you think about something like an Alistair, maybe? Okay. Okay. I'm looking to see if you have any source of information that allows you to be no, this prophetic. No, I don't. I'm the just, answer is no. Unfortunately, the pro meta is a little predictable. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, come on. If they are Here, sticking here's to the what trend. I'll say is, I imagine on the balance team it's really annoying because you look at the data behind the scenes and you're like, these champions and builds are objectively OP, and then you turn on your screen and what do you see? <laughs> it's Cassante Sidwani yeah. again. <laughs> How does it keep happening? Is it Cassante? It's yeah. Come on. Kana, come on. We were promised. We were promised. You were the chosen yeah. one, Kana. <laughs> Photon showed us Camille come earlier on. today. Oh. Yes, Kana! Kana? Don't, toy. Don't let us down. Don't that would be that's down. not that's not as exciting. I mean, it's a little bit more cool. exciting. That's cool. Something different, perhaps? Something different. Okay, okay. At least it's not Cassante. Oh, Partial points for Kana. <laughs> Still has the potential to be the chosen one here. Cassante. Vars top, Fiddlesticks top, Twisted Fate top, Muin. Come on, man. We know you, you know us. We keep both it know fresh. Keep it fresh, keep it keep easy. Keep it spicy. Remember, they're already going to see Odawamne dance for them. You have to prove you can dance better. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to swear. We, Whoops. <laughs> we tried. Oh, shoot. Ah, shucks. Oh, darn. Unlucky. Oh, no. Maybe one more nerf will do the trick. He's just built different. <laughs> All right, well, Cassante comes through. Maybe not the most exciting matchup on the top side, but mid jungle set to be pretty explosive. Ash, a lot of utility for the side of Mad Lions, quite a lot of really good engage options. On the opposite side for KC, you know, upset feels like that late game scaling insurance, a hyper carry for upset, something we didn't get to see on day one. Curious to see what kind of form he's in. I mean, I will say, you kind of look at these mid jungles, so both comps, they come across as very skirmish heavy. You know, LeBlanc loves to fight you in the early game, Rek'Sai, very similar. However, I don't love LeBlanc Sejuani as a combo. Uh, I think Rek'Sai Talia should have some great power because of their setup. But we'll see how things play out. Mid jungle, I think, is going to play a big part as the fans enthusiastic as ever as we jump into our third game of the day. The Giant X fans and Mad Lions Koi fans uniting in their love for the Superliga in Spain. Arcticops, Greg is on your screen. Let's get into it. Probably one of our most exciting matches of the weekend and the color coordination. Look at this. 
This is something that has to be respected here. Mad Lions, Koi, all, all different sorts of chromas. Where, where's their sync? Where's their outfit? Where's their stylus? You know, that's what I'm trying to understand. On the opposite side for KC, blue chroma, blue skin, blue chroma. Rek'Sai, Closer's eh, eh, working on it. You know, he's got a little bit of something Purple's else in there. close to blue. I think that's red, though. Okay, but blue and red complement each other, right? <laughs> nah, it's a little bit, well, they're, they're kind of a J, like purples in the middle. I don't, listen, I was, when I first joined the LEC, I'll never forget this. Quick shot just got me a color wheel and said, learn. Never did. Never <laughs> did. He also probably never followed up on that. He never did. He just <laughs> handed you a color wheel. He did. Just handed me a color wheel and said, here you go, you can learn. When I, again, as you saw on the bottom of your screen, call out for the Twitter, for the tweets. Get yeah, at us. Who's better? Tweets. Super upset. We've talked about this. Super, maybe less proven. A lot of people skeptical since he said, you know, he's better than Deft. Upset, a guy who's been around for a long time. More handsome, less passive than Reckless. Many people confident to say that, but is he more handsome? That and tweet has followed him his whole career. Supa. It was a great tweet. <laughs> if, uh, I w we need more like that. But Supa, doing the Ash thing, stepping in and out of the brush, knowing that Alistair the level pro one yeah, is kind of useless. Completely useless. He's there to body block. He's but again, blue just body pajamas. These are the things we have to keep track of. Alvaro, interrupted. Again, just trading damage back and forth here. Doesn't look like anyone's lost too much XP. An exchange of aftershocks as junglers start. Top side path towards bot. Super and Alvaro should be able to get the earlier level two. We'll see if they can really do much off the back of it. But uh, yeah, Jinx, Alistair is not a bot lane I would consider fearsome. Good scaling, great team fighting. Yeah. But laning phase, just kind of, what's the word? Passive? Passive, muted, quiet. Bad. <laughs> Depends on how much credit you want to give yeah. to the duo. Nothing against Upset and Targa, right? They just, you can't really do a lot in that 2v2. Ash basically solo wins lane and they have a slightly better support for at least the first few levels. As now, El Yoya just going through a full jungle clear. Looks like both sides. To his blue, though. Maybe he's looking for something a little bit earlier. Perhaps he just wants to cover because he recognizes that the bot lane does have that advanced push. Vladdy already. On the way down, I think he just wants to drop his ward, get some information on the river, see if he can spot out Aljoya as he's likely to clear out the crab on the bot side of the map, given that he does have prior on this side. You kind of look across the board, Mirwin with early push top side, MDK with that push in bot, and also LeBlanc. Now that you've got that level three, you have a little bit more kill threat. Even though it's Vladdy that has the push for now, the reality is that this LeBlanc, uh, if she can get on top of you, can be very, very scary. As we were saying, nice trade there from Friskawi. Going to force Vladdy back because he does, of course, have the TP, so he's not going to be too upset about it. Yeah, for now, relatively quiet. Of course, again, you talk about the, the stakes for both of these organizations. A lot of history when it comes through between specifically the LFL and the Super League. For KC and Mad Lions, quite, not quite as much, but when we look at their overall head-to-head, -head, when we look at the past, still some interesting numbers to keep track of. Still a trend to follow. Oh. There it is. There it is. Two wins, seven losses, six wins, ten losses. Really selling them there. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, huh? I'm bad at reading. What does this say, <laughs> Mitty? How are neither of them you, positive against you, the other? <laughs> you prepared the numbers. <laughs> ah, record. Yeah? You want to explain those numbers to me, Draco? Yeah, so it's it's in spring. They're two seven and six ten. Oh, I misunderstood when I requested. That makes more seven. I thought that was their that record against sense. each other. I okay. was like, how do they have a combined seven yeah, you team? Confused me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, bottom line, these are their records in spring. They didn't have a good spring. They didn't have a good spring, right? And ultimately, the only thing that really matters, I think, for KC fans is KC won the last time these two teams played against each other, which was very embarrassing for MDK because the first time around. Uh, Casey, we're talking, you know, it's a big smack. Yamato was out there sure. hitting him with the big tweets, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ebi. Did not work out super hard. <laughs> <laughs> Second time around, a little bit better. So far, it's a tempered early game. Just a lot of farming back and forth. Kind of what we've been seeing in this meta. I will say... Is this you know, the meta or are teams like... Nah, bro, obviously, summer's really important. No, nah, no, nah, because you got to remember, you right? scared. Basically, the... Oh, hang on. All right. Control ward gonna go in favor of Casey. Basically, the old meta was very much about like diving bot lane. Yep. That's why lane swaps even became a thing because they wanted the bot lanes to stop getting dived, <laughs> and so you could actually start picking scaling matchups. And then they made it way harder 
Uh, and also, it felt like that because AP junglers became stronger, mm. that then forced AD mids, and then your engage kind of had to come from support. Um, but in this game, there is no AP junglers. <laughs> but they've just picked scaling AD carries anyway. And so we're just playing a slower game. There's not really any lanes for the junglers to easily play around. It's mainly about covering for one another. You'd expect, again, the kind of mid jungles is where you'd expect some sort of early skirmishing. But neither mid laner is kind of eager to move out of their lane. Right now, it's just kind of a constant back and forth push between the two. As junglers primarily focus on hovering with their supports and uh, just making sure that there's an element of safety across the map. Yeah, well, both sides just kind of squaring up here. Junglers walking into bot side just to be spotted, just to be visible. Very awkward early game. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen junglers just wander into bot, hang out, go, all right, we've spent our time with the kids back to your moms for the week, <laughs> and then just return to farming the camp. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ultimately, quiet thus far. Six and a half minutes in, not a lot to report. The air feels tense, man. Does it? KC fans. I feel very relaxed a lot of right now. Fans <laughs> in the audience. If I was playing this game, it'd be very relaxing. You know, just focus I mean, on the farm, drop if, a ward down here and there. I feel like if you're upset in this game, you're chilling. You know, you're just like, all right, my job is to farm and not die. And as long as I farm and not die and nothing else goes wrong in the rest of the map, we probably, you know, are, are in a pretty good spot. That's that MDK. So now what you'd expect is Closer goes top, he takes the grub, 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 grubs. That's what I'm yep. looking for. And it's just an exchange of objectives. Super gonna tick over to level six. What are we, what are we getting amped for? Dragon going down. First major objective of the game. Oh, Targa, only level four. Super just trying to zone him away from the tower. Good stun, it may need ignite. He's only level four, Targa! He got no business being there! I didn't think he could die to that. He I mean, did he not was, think that either, clearly. He was one tick over level five. If he'd been able to get it, that would have been enough health to keep him alive, but credit to Alvaro, he makes the dive happen very cleanly. First blood to MDK's bot lane. Huh. Well, there you have it. Dragon picked up as well as the kill on bots. I mean, good read from Supa, right? Just commits to the play, knows the Ignite's gonna finish the job. Targamus does have Aftershock, but still relatively squishy, pre-level six. Closer to the good news is going to grab the Void Grubs, but it won't mean a whole lot unless you grab the second spawn as well. Especially because it's not like they really have a pushing lane to play through uh, with that extra damage to towers. Yeah, I mean, the ball lane was supposed to just be farm, Farmville. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that old Facebook game. I do. Uh, I'm very mini fond of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, things have gone awry. Small gold lead for MDK. They are hovering around mid right now. All right. And they Targamus, will... finally level oh. five. Jump. Since we have an accord. Do you not feel the tension? I feel like they're what? just tension. I feel like they're like on the edge of their seats, like afraid to make a mistake. It feels tense to me. Like, did you watch Vitality play earlier? That I felt loosey goosey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like by comparison, <laughs> this feels very tense. Neither side wants to commit. Not a single spell wasted. It's only the first game or second game of the season for both these lineups. First week. But now upset and target must return to bot side. And I can tell you right now, Casey don't want to lose because they don't want to be 10th again. Mad don't want to lose because they don't want to lose to the team that went 10th two places twice in a row. I mean, that's big stakes on both sides, really. I mean, for sure. <laughs> There's also the element of the Spanish-French rivalry. I mean, certainly, and, uh, you know, trying to get to third place. Ultimately, if you want to make season finals for KC, they don't have any points, so... Literally zero. On placement. Literally zero points. I have just heard from production that our first tweet is ready. Let's see what the fans have to say about the age-old battle, or the new age battle, I should say, of Supa versus Upset. I think Supa, Supa is better than Upset, but I feel that's more of a support diff due to Alvaro being better than Targamas. Ooh, making it, switching it around, making it about the supports. We wanted 80 carry opinions. <laughs> Finals out here, bringing it to the supports. Targamas did just die, I mean, though, so I don't know if he made that tweet before the death or after the death. I was gonna say, if it was before the death, Fair play. Fair play. Fair if it's play. after the death, come on, bro. You can't. That is like hindsight is 2020. <laughs> a fat, okay. I don't think that's a fake tweet, chat. I think that's a real one. It might be real. That is my favorite meme. <laughs> all the They're all like, fake. they all go, they all like Sasuke fake tweet. <laughs> mm. Is it real? 
My other favorite one is um, when like a really sick play happens and then the chat goes, I wonder where Faker is. <laughs> is he here right now? <laughs> Hall of Legends promo? Upset because Super, Super is Astro carried, carried by, by Alvaro. Alvaro. <laughs> <laughs> Alvaro is just everyone uh, singing Alvaro's Alvaro getting a lot of hype this, today, but hell yeah, there's mean, a lot of a sideways shade being yeah. thrown at different people. The first it's, one was Targa. It's so funny now how it's everyone, super. in order to praise Alvaro, they've just got to throw this shade on everyone internet. else. It's a zero, yeah. Praise on the internet yeah. is a zero-sum game. Yeah. In order for someone to be good, someone else has to be trash. Uh, Those are the rules. Those are the rules. But I prefer an alternative version of the zero-sum game. Are you with me? Hell yeah. You know about... Less passive, more handsome. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So you're aware of the newest AD carry metric brought to you by League of Legends Esports, right? No. Well, if luck will have it, we now have the tools to dissect and get your expert opinion on. My expert opinion? I need your expert opinion, Betty. Very soon, we're going to bring up a chart, and I'm going to need you to break down where Supa and Upset sit on the latest AD carry metric, advanced analytics coming in from League of Legends Esports. Passivity and handsomeness. Passivity and what? <laughs> You're telling me that you've made some sort of... <laughs> yes. And now <laughs> using this, I need to understand who is the most handsome and the least passive. For example, oh, you could just put multiple faces. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. I thought it was so, one face. Out. So you want to tell me who is... Yes. Well, let's start off by I think that they're both very handsome individuals. No, 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 it's one scale. Okay. You, can, you can be, it's scale. one scale. <laughs> so they're it's an either advanced passive metric. or they're handsome. They're either <laughs> passive or they're handsome. Well, they're there both, is only metric. They're both think down about here it. right think now. About it. Think about it, Gumi Yushi, incredibly handsome, not passive. Okay, <laughs> that right now based on this, actually, no, no, no. No, no, they're, no, don't no, no, you no, say no, that. Hang on. There's a kill happening top lane, by no, the way. Hold that thought. Mirwin, pull back, solo bolo on Kana. Kana taken down by Mirwin. We okay. didn't need any top leaders from Korea. We got him right we, here. We need to put a photo of Mewin at the handsome scale right now because he ain't any passive, no Drake. Passive. <laughs> I There's thought it was no for AD carries. The top lane. Mirwin's mixing it up. Well, it might not Mirwin be a perfect metric. with the song. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> hey, you already threw me a curveball with that <laughs> metric. Yeah, let us know where you think your favorite AD carry lies on the passive to handsome scale. We'll try scale. and update it throughout the game, I guess. <laughs> we might need a Mirwin face there. <laughs> In the weeks to come. Okay, let's take a look. We were a bit sidetracked with advanced analytics, but we can get back to the normal play I mean, I wasn't play. expecting a solo kill to happen up here. Oh, nice use of the ultimate to buff that Kana's ulti. He then tries to create space, but uh, Mirwin playing it perfectly. Doesn't even take a drop of damage, only to the tower. And just a beautiful solo kill. Mirwin showing EU's got it. Plays into the crowd. And why not? Solo kill onto Kana. Great way to start off the season. No passivity, all handsomeness, all, handsome. all the time. Mirwin. He's coming in with a fresh cut this split as well. True. Brolo Jojo, which is surprisingly similar to Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Casey Koopa. Uh, I might, we might know what his alliance leads. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, yeah. Upset doesn't even know who Supa is. That's a bit of a problem. Classic. <laughs> Uh, Supa just arrowed and killed his support, so I hope, I hope that he's learning fast. That said, Upset. Got the scaling choice, right? If anyone's gonna take over this game, we saw a pentakill earlier today from Ice. Can Upset replicate that here? He's uh, gonna have to make some magic happen. Right now, Casey haven't been able to find any successful plays. They do have the six scrubs, of course. The two dragons in favor of MDK is a common trade we've been seeing here in the LEC. The third dragon's gonna be, well, we expect some combat. Prescowi, though, working with his team to help control. Well, I thought they had a control wood in that brush. I stand corrected. Grouping, determined. Gonna grab the red buff here for upset. Of course, he's kind of the big damage threat. We'll have Kana and Gladys do a lot of magic damage, disrupt, make it really hard for Supa, especially, to play these fights out on an immobile champion like the Ash. And of course, Jinx, you yeah, know, what do you say? She's the same champion she's been for so long, kind of this ticking time bomb. Not gonna see a, a weird lane swap here. They're coming in. You guys are tweeting a lot. I respect this. I can't tell. I'm assuming the X is because they're matched. The name is Hasi. Hasi. Hasi Hasi, even. <laughs> Upset is on top, so he doesn't have enough experience and has to prove himself first. I mean, he did. They're 1 say 1. So, we could say this is the decider. This is like the world finals also, I mean, of regular season Casey versus Mad Lions. Boy. I mean, to be fair, now I ain't trying to throw any shade, I'm just stating facts. Yes. Super did make a finals in his first split. Upset has been 10 plays three times in a row. 
I'm, I'm just stating facts. Those, those are only. That's all I've done. <laughs> okay. Uh, facts hurt. They do. Now, of course, facts don't represent a player. You know. Upset what? still. <laughs> Sorry, do you want to say that again? Yeah, facts <laughs> don't entirely represent a player. You know, circumstances. There's a lot of variables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That come into. You know, it's a team game, it not an individual's game. game. You know what I mean? It is a team game. As we learned with Mirror One on the top side. I do think that Casey, as we get later, though, their life just gets easier. Alistair's one of those champions where the further you go in the game, the more powerful he's going to feel. Targamus, that was a big... I can't... You know, that was bad earlier on. Probably shouldn't have died there. But it hasn't cost too much. And overall, minor gold deficit. I think you're right, though. You can see the setup here. Drake, minute 45 seconds away. Oh, hang on. Getting a fight. Getting a fight. Good initial engage. It's solid on Alvaro. Alvaro just going to get interrupted. And pop! Super already missed the arrow. And Upset's taking it personal. An easy pickup for KC. Punishes Alvaro. Finally find themselves on the board. Dragon's still a minute and a half away, though, so just a single pick. Scowie has his eyes on upset. Upset getting chased down. Frescawi made it in the chains, and upset's dead. Subath's flat for his life. Can the mid laner get redemption for his AD carry? Frescawi not going to be in trouble as well. Oh, yo, yo, with a clean disengage. Excellent ultimate. Pick that one off, and upset taken out. Thumbs up from Frescawi as he finds a nice pick. Set up by Super, applying the slow onto upset. Doesn't use the cleanse, does commit the flash. And he ends up losing his life. Great stuff from MDK. To hold on to that lead for now. Dragon in 50 seconds. You imagine this is going to be a big breakpoint fight. Two items now finished for Frescau. He makes this LeBlanc very scary coming into this objective. I mean, certainly does, right? You've also got Elia opting for some more aggressive early itemization, delaying Warmogs, which is so often the first item rush that we see. And favorite the Zeke's butt. Set up on the objective is going to be big. For now, MDK, decent vision control. Scuttle Crab going to guarantee at least a couple seconds of vision around this objective before it gets started. Casey really do not want to give over that third Drake. And for MDK, if they get any kind of fight win, if they can break open mid lane tower with an Ash and a LeBlanc who are doing this well in the game, it's going to be so hard for Casey to play. Well, Casey have good setup around this dragon. Both top laners have TP available, ready to get involved in the fight. New and though with a full level advantage, Alyoya maybe split from his team yet. Alyoya, still doing okay for now. Hunted back, not ideal. Mounts up into the Herald! It's so big bad. What? He's a genius! Look at him go! Oh! Oh, play the music! Ba, 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 ba. Oh my gosh. Cast him in the next one, fast 15. Oh, yo, yeah, will not be caught. I think Targamus thought he was going to knock him into the wall, but that was a thing of beauty right there. I can't. So Targamus knocked him over the wall. As you rightly said, I don't think he was expecting to knock him over. And then Oh, yeah, used that space to get into the Herald to run away to safety. Now, the downside is this dragon being started off by KC. But Casey's positioning very awkward DK, here. Targum is immediately going to try to ult. Kana getting shunked out, dashing backwards. Super desperate now to finish the kill. Flash forward, El Yoya and Supa getting the kill together. MDK really trying to take over across the map. Vladdy trying to get a tower back, will be able to do so. But meanwhile, on the tops of the map, Mirwin is getting something. But a Drake picked up by KC. They'll at least be able to stall the Drake stacking on the side of MDK, but they're only getting further and further ahead. I mean, MDK just splitting the map right now. They're willing to concede the third dragon in exchange for a kill. The mid tower, the top tower, Miu, and also gaining huge advantages. It's nearly going to be two levels up on Karna. MDK extending the goal lead to 3k. And what has been a largely passive game, it is MDK who have been able to find these picks, find these punishes. And Super, look at that, a 1.8k gold lead over his AD carry counterpart. And that feels damn good. Of course, coming up next, we've got Juon versus Ultra Instinct Razork. <laughs> so we'll see how that one goes as well. That caught me off guard. That was <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Spain battles today. <laughs> Spanish jungler, giant X course, Spanish kind of organization. taking over the LEC slowly but surely. I mean, it's looking good so far. The battle of KC versus MDK. Baron spawning. This lead is starting to get a bit concerning here. Yes, Jinx will be powerful in the fights, but the coordination hasn't really been there for KC either thus far this game. Support still strong. KC. I'm wondering if you should cast the game or if you should cast the people in the audience. KC fans clapping, spreading their hands. Clapping and stomping on the side of MDK fans. Slapping on the railing. 
passion regardless. You like to see it. In the game, however, things have stalled out a little bit. MDK, I don't think, have enough damage to really take this objective. Don't really have the best team to take a Baron. And Casey going to be pretty comfortable knowing that they have a bit more time to just sit back, scale up in this game. Would really love to get upset to three items. Even two would be a decent start. Of course, no crit chance for the Jinx quite yet. Super already a bit ahead of the curve with the PD as well as the extra cloak. Upset very close to it, but uh, still at that kind of deficit. A ways away from that. Here's, I mean, here's I will a say Drake. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, Vetti. Yeah. So it's a complicated metric, and you're a smarter man than I am. So if someone, because of the pick that they brought out, like a like a Jinx has to sit back and scale. No, because are mean, they by default less handsome because they have to play passive? What? I'm really I, trying to get my head I, around the scale you, that okay. you introduced. <laughs> that, I, that I introduced? Yeah, I'm just trying I, to understand. Okay. I, I trust you because you're a smarter guy than me, but right. I'm just not exactly sure how it works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I understand your confusion <laughs> in uh, what is a very complicated metric um, because obviously passivity and handsomeness, <laughs> very comparable. So when you put them on a scale, at first it might seem complicated, but um, mm -hmm. really you've got to think about, um, well, there's a lot of variables. Math. Yeah, yeah there's so much Dang. mathematics that go yeah. into. It's really, really complicated. I didn't I mean... make this scale, <laughs> Draco. I didn't make it, okay? You threw me in here, and I'm trying to save you, but I don't know what, what, what was the plan, huh? Look, man, sometimes you just need to figure out new ways to talk about 80 carries who are both this incredible. is our new ways. And have historically been incredibly confident. You know what I mean? You know, and I'm, are both incredibly handsome. Like, look, let's not beat around the bush. Good looking dudes. <laughs> that said, right now in this game, Supa, more aggressive, getting the farm, 1.7k individual gold lead. He's looking damn good. Now, admittedly, Ash, a lot stronger than the earlier stage oh, of the game. It's a double entendre. Looking damn good, both in terms of play and handsomeness. Bam. I get it. You should be a rapper. You, you said the line. <laughs> you should be a guy on YouTube who breaks down, down raps. <laughs> I would enjoy that. I need you to explain the rap beefs to me. <laughs> I cannot keep up. They are too convoluted. <laughs> Why did Drake do hey there, Delilah? It doesn't make any sense. It's one of those things where some of the, I've seen some comedians like go very deep, many layers. <laughs> anyway, it's too much for me. Yeah. It's too much to break down. Did you know 7 p.m. on a Wednesday, this one rapper ate a taco. Now there's an origin story. Yeah. <laughs> Historically, he did not like this. Is a clone in his body eating a taco. Now, viewers at home, if you've just joined us, you may be confused as to why we're discussing this. Um, we're waiting for the next dragon to spawn. Yeah, which will be the um, next big arena. Of course, we're really excited for KC versus MDK, but the game has not been that explosive. Not all yet. <laughs> Even remotely explosive, we're at five kills. Because I want to be honest, when we walked into the room to talk about how we wanted to talk about this game on Wednesday, when we did our story meet, it was a lot of France, Spain, Superliga, LFL, yeah. explosion, Blood rivalry. On the yeah. So far, it's been... Chilling with the boys. Yes, chilling with the boys. Yep, it's been a vibe. Uh, but here we are, the dragon's up. Baron alive too. New and top. Kind of bot. Careful. Look at this sign from Frescaui. Frescaui off to the side. Super just starting to rain auto attacks onto Targamus. Frescaui's already out there, and in the meantime, Mirwan is already splitting. Good route coming through. Frescaui. Wall built up. Will allow him to just walk away, and Mirwan just continues to hit the towers. The team Osai and the cheers of the Mad Lions Koi fans letting you know that he's sealed the deal. Another 650 gold for him as the gold lead only continues to grow for Mad Lions Koi. That's going to be a barren start for MDK. I'm not sure how this one's going to pan out for them, but let's find out. Press Gowie jumps up. Vladdy loses half his health. It seems like it's panning pretty good. It's panning out. Panning back to the Baron. Mirror one try to pull back onto Targamus. Grouping into the choke though, they have to be careful now. Dash in, coming in from Mirwin. Mirwin now isolated off to the side, looking for the 1v1. Upset on his lonesome, left to Mirwin. We should have had Mirwin versus Upset be the match if this man's getting it all done. And once again, he keeps getting punted exactly where he wants to go. MDK taking the fight, can turn back to the Baron, can take their sweet time. It's a damn handsome top lane that MDK have got. Mirwin. Just decimating the back line of KC, giving them no room to breathe. Of course, Targamus had already committed the ultimate earlier. So even though he wanted to act as a front line, it was super easy.
for MDK to just initiate onto the Alistair and turn it into a one fight. That's going to be a Baron secured. If we look back at the start, nice ulti from Alyoya. But then look at Mirwin, unstoppable, finds his target, gets knocked over the wall by Targa. As Targa tries to escape, he ends up delivering Mirwin to his AD carry. And on the bottom side, you've got the two members for Scowie also cleaning up. Nicely played there from MDK. Smiles on the faces of the coaching staff as they're looking to bring their first win of summer. Definitely saw performance thus far, just steps ahead. 8K gold lead, starting to feel pretty damn insurmountable. See what else they can get done on the back of this Red Bull Baron power play. Casey just absorbing any farm they can. Two really rough fights from Targa on the bottom side, of course, pushing El Yoya back out of the range of his team. And now in this fight as well, knocking him over into upset. Upset! You know, again, two and a half items, I don't think you'd be able to do a lot against Cassante, but you could at least hope that he's out of arm's reach. So has been a bit of a tragic showing today. For KC, of course, again, putting things in perspective, fans still here, fans still amped, ready to support this team. Despite the struggles, despite the difficulties, as MDK continue to push in, this is only two of the nine games they get a chance to play, but they need to start finding wins fast. And maybe if they can buy enough time, they can turn this one around, a TP behind, an aggressive maneuver. Aggressive look. Connor ready to go in. Targum is not quite going to connect on the headbutt. Pulverize. Good ulti from El Yoya to stop any further follow up. Play just going to fizzle. Meanwhile, Mirwin just continues pushing mid lane and powering that cannon creep, knowing they can knock down the tower. Nice play from Friscali to avoid that initiation. MDK not slowing down now that they have the Baron. They secure the mid inhibitor. They don't really have a wave on top to play around. Friscali is going to go catch bot wave. I think overstacking on bot to try and push this. I don't know. How, I mean, that tower is pretty low, so they should be able to secure this objective, but very likely that they'll try and unlock this tower and then make their way towards the dragon. But MDK, a very one-sided game overall. Only a single kill for KC. 27 minutes in. They're just letting the Baron do the work for them. For Scammy, though. Good interrupt. Knock back to the wall. The Ignite marking the real target. A quick shutdown. Slowing down the initial push. Mirwan, of course, already in the mid lane, but... A little glimmer of hope for the side of KC. Nice to have the additional income. I mean, bit of a misplay there. Oh, hang on. They keep the tower alive for now. But uh, Friscari really shouldn't have just been pushing that alone. It's quite easy for KC to initiate with the composition that they have. I think MDK should have just regrouped instead of kind of holding off, looking for a potential collapse. They will convert it into a dragon. Still in commanding position. I mean, but sole point. You got upset about to hit over to three items. You have a Gragas, you have an Alistair. If you find a good angle, you get decent vision control, a good flank. There's a way that KC can win the fights, but thus far the execution from Matt has just been better outside of that single instance in the bottom lane. Targum is looking to try and remove all the blast plants on their side of the rift. KC looks to get what farm they can. Upset working tirelessly to secure what looks to be the uh, LDR. This man is full-time job. We talked about it earlier, Farmville. He's getting the upgrades, he's getting the tool. Star, Stardew Valley, man. Super is paying off on those early investments. Who would have thought? Getting kills helps later. Who would have thought? Crazy. In hindsight. It's like Bitcoin, of course. Should have known. Should have known. I should have gotten kills. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Uh, if only I had gotten into the kill game sooner. <laughs> But it's only one kill, to be fair, and 300 CS. But the four additional assists certainly help, as well as a lot of the global gold that has gone over. I think probably most of it is the global gold. Yeah, I mean, they also got a bunch of plates in lane, too, right? Remember, yeah. Alistair Jinx is not a lane. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is a team fighting duo, though. I feel For like sure. we haven't gotten to see that yet. No, we haven't. Mirwin? Oh, Cassante still Cassante's. More changes, good knockup, bit of poke, bit of damage. Again, Lord Dominix is, he is there. Damage? Well, it's hard to say, but with my glasses on, I can say yes. The oh, problem look, is with buff Red Buff, in. <laughs> that damage is now gone. He's just healing. This is the struggle, I think, of the meta right now. Probably part of the reason the Cassante is so good is this. Who, who does enough damage in a world without Giant Slayer to kill a Cassante? Four item AD carry? Yeah, sure. Three item AD carry? Maybe not. Yeah, I remember reading that uh, Reddit post where someone was like, guys, tanks are now really good. And Cassante was reading that going, 
Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> what if there was a tank that also did damage? Target, Hex Flash, Engage. It's a yo-yo. Well, they brought an item in for that, didn't they? I forget its name, but it's one of the new ones. Converts your bonus HD into AD now and stuff. Oh, the blood mail? Some, yeah, the blood mail. Yeah, but that's like, it can make any tank into budget Cassante. <laughs> Cassante builds defense, and defense gives him offense. It's like how Pike converts HP into AD, except you get both things instead of losing one of them. No, yeah, no, I get it. And uh, it's like if Yasuo was tanky. I, I do know, feel I bad know. for Ban's team because, like, <laughs> you know, they hadn't seen Cassandra after, you know, they gutted him, right? During MSI. They're like, right? surely it'll be enough. This the be win enough. rate is And abysmal. so they were like, it's so bad. So we'll buff him a teeny tiny bit, just so the solo queue players can still enjoy Cassandra. And pros are just like, that was a mistake. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you see him doing that. You could have kept him nerfed, and we were going to play him anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Mirwin's clearly feeling comfortable. Like, look, yesterday the TF game was rough. He was just a TF with a gold card against a super fed Camille. He that he was. Lot. Now he's a Cassante who could probably 1v5 tank the entire team for 20 seconds. Probably. He is almost full build. The globe is real. He is choving on Cassante. That feels pretty good. Is it flaming? Are we still doing Flame Horizon, or has Chovy eclipsed all of their farmers? Yeah, but Chovying is when you have, like, you're keeping, like, he's got 335 yeah, yeah, CS yeah, at 31 flame, minutes. Flame only you know gets credit I mean? when you're 100 ahead. Yeah, it's only yeah, 100 yeah, yeah, ahead, of course. The, the true Flame Horizon. Is Alvaro cooking here? I think they're cooking. Looking for the angle. Mirror one coming through. Alvaro already finding one, but the immediate follow-up isn't quite there. Vladdy trying to make his way out to safety, but again, Super already into the back line. That's another one taken down. Mirror one on a rampage. He's just not going to get stopped. He's ghosting. He's going as fast as he can. Connor ready to disengage for upset, but Jinx just doesn't have the damage. Close result. The already down. MDK barreling down the top side of the map, and well, Targamus is being herded. Sent out to pasture. The chain's now on. Yeah. Back to the farm he goes. I mean, MDK don't even need the Baron. They'll take the fight. They'll sweep KC once more. Only two members left alive. I don't know if Upset's going to have the wave clear to stop MDK from sieging. If he can buy another 20 seconds, there's a chance. But Mirwin is on the hunt. Mirwin not going to let it happen. Oh, yeah, with the slow as well. They don't quite sync up well enough. But for Scali coming in, just means there's no way he can approach. There's just not enough handsomeness in the world to solve this problem. AC, do stop the push though. MDK don't want to overcommit. Kind of doing a good job of clearing the wave. Upset as well, obviously can just shred through it if he's given a couple chances to auto. Damage has been done. Two inhibitors, one of the Nexus Towers gone. They can just reset for either the Soul or the Baron. But uh, yeah, this is kind of the meta that we live in, Dracos. A little bit slower. And KC unfortunately haven't been able to show us anything in this game, really. Two kills. Early grubs show up, but those were mainly cross maps in exchange for the dragons. And I think it's tough, right? When you've already had such a difficult year, you're kind of resetting most of the roster, hoping for this big honeymoon phase where you're going to hit the ground running. And you just have to hope for, for the team, for the organization, for the staff behind the scenes that you can hold on to that strong mental, that you can push forward and just let this be a couple of losses and not an indicator of what's to come in the split. For MDK, yesterday obviously had some good moments against G2, weren't able to really turn those into greater advantages, but today they have not struggled against KC. Now setting their sights on the second Baron of the game. It's a four item Ash. Supa looking unkillable. No real backline threat into any of these fights as MDK have almost always been the ones initiating the exchange. Jinx Rocket, dangerously close, but MDK gonna grab the objective. Now with the Baron, MDK have a clear objective in mind. And that is the enemy's Nexus, 34 minutes in. They're looking to try and round things out. KC, they're going to need a miracle fight to turn this one around, but it is uh, not realistic at the gold gap that currently exists. Super, we were talking about full builds earlier. Redemption now completed for Mirwin as well. It is a tanky topside on the side of uh, MDK. And I don't know if KC have the damage to get through it. I mean, it's really tough, right? Lord Dominic's obviously would feel so much better if you had the IE, but really want the additional attack speed here. Upset doing what he can again to clear the wave. Celestial Opposition procced onto Targamus. He's a little bit squishier, but of course still has his ultimate there. MDK want to keep sieging. Super doesn't have a lot of range here to approach, so Elia finds a decent angle onto Vladdy. Good interrupt from Target to stop the follow-up. Now getting caught in the midst of the fight. Alvaro looks like he's about to shred. That's the reset now coming in for Upset. One more rocket gonna come out, but MDK already gotten one kill back. Upset locked up. Turning back under Press Cowie. Excellent engage, KC! Coming alive in the base, Mirwin. Pushed back, but again, they're so damn tanky. Good damage, good hold from the side of KC. Good punish there from KC. 
There's an overstep from Friscawi. And Alvaro means that KC exchange one for two, which, given their deficit, just allows them to buy a little bit more time. Maybe Upset can actually secure that Infinity Edge, but the tankiness issue is not going to go away, as the soul is going to be secured for MDK. We look back at the play. Uh, I mean, the initiation doesn't really result in anything. Targamus is tanking up a lot, and then Alvaro is stuck underneath the tower to allow Upset to just free hit. And then at this point, he's able to get a good cleanse off, then a really nice barrel from Kana. Knocks for Scowie underneath the tower. And just keeping this tower alive did a lot for KC. And it gives them a glimmer of hope of staying relevant in this game. You see the KC fans outside the studio with Kometo. I mean, stressful game, right? You've been watching the slow death. Finally, though, a glimmer of hope for KC. Yes, there's a 10k deficit. There's yes, the there's a soul. Edge. I mean, the, <laughs> the good news Ooh. is that at a certain point, gold difference doesn't matter anymore. True. Because you keep gaining gold, but Super you can't, can't spend buy it on any more thing. items. Actually, he can. You he can upgrade his boots. Yes. yes. Which is very good on Ash. I mean, generally pretty good as Targa. Good flick on Ash. Maybe. Relatively squishy. You can see decent Look at there. how tanky they are, though. I mean, Chemtech. Chemtech, and you got the Warmogs. It is very tough to get damage to stick. And also, of course, the Cassante Classic when you're ahead, just building supportive items for your team. You've got Locket as well as Redemption from Mirwin. He's doing it all this game. So doing what he can to thin out the waves. Keeping Kane in the mid lane, knowing that with the tower there, it's a little bit easier. Casey don't want to lose the third inhibitor if they can. It's a long time until any neutral objective, so as long as Casey can hold, they can continue to stall. Have to be careful, you're likely to have to give the tower up to Frescawi. But I mean, they just melt those down. waves, Kana and Upset together. The flip back on El be Yoga, decent soon. damage, Jinx starting to hurt, Elio getting lower and lower, Rocket goes in, doesn't quite finish, Redemption to heal, get the reset, Closer in the back line, of course, ulting in to try to finish the kill, but does not get it, Alvaro goes to the re-engage and he's gonna get picked off, Jinx now getting the resets, Mirwin, how tanky are you? Not tanky enough, Upset finally online, but he might be able to turn it back, clean flashback on the Pathmaker, now Mirwin trying to make the escape, but the flickback is there, a shutdown for Upset, and KC continue to hold the line. That's the second fight they've now won in their base, Upset. Progressively getting more handsome as the game continues. The, the gold is being generated. This Jinx is becoming more terrifying. His positioning is great in the fight. And look, that gold gap is slowly starting to mean less and less and less. Ultimately. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's up here right now, Dracos. There he is. He's just so damn, so damn handsome. He's so damn handsome. It might be too much to handle the Jinx well and truly online. MDK continuing the push forward. Zupa going to hold the line here. Zupa, of course, full build. But this is where the, it being the Ash starts to be hard, right? You have to move flawlessly in these fights. And if KC are fighting on even footing, they have a lot of tools I to mean, disrupt so you. There's a couple things. You've got to remember that fighting in your base is very different to fighting around an objective because up until this point, it's kind of been MDK trying to force the fights in yep. the base. And KC have a lot of safety in terms of where their base is. Um, now that they're out in the field, you still have to navigate the fact that Cassandra has way more flank angles. LeBlanc can create a lot more chaos using the terrain. KC have done a good job being able to buy themselves some time, thanks to the inhibitors respawning at just the right moment as well. But that doesn't mean that they are clear-cut favorites to turn this game in their favor. Certainly aren't, because remember, Upset did burn Flash in the previous exchange. The oh, cleanse yeah. is up and available, but again, if someone's already on top of you, the cleanse, without the support of the rest of the team, not going to save the day. So many supportive items to keep Supa and the rest of the team alive. Again, double locket, you've got a Knight's Vow, so many good tools on the side of MDK, luxury items that they've been able to purchase with their gold lead. Not really any defensive items for Upset coming through. That said, he's full build now. He's that last build. fight did him a lot of favors. That's a Runans. Yeah, so this is where we're talking about, like, even though it's a 1.9k gold difference, it just doesn't matter, you know? He's reached the point in the game where he is at his strongest. He can start picking up some pots, too, which I think he's currently sitting on. Maybe he didn't quite have enough gold, but... Yeah, and now their wave crew is even stronger, so they can turtle, they can stall even more. Rek'Sai going to be a great tool for being able to pick out the opposition and sitting in the fog of war. The Baron is now alive. Casey, are they even going to bother trying to fight it? Do they feel like they have to? There's always the risk of, well, I say a back door. They still have that Nexus Tower alive. 
is he grouped? Four, five now in the mid lane. Mirwin looking for the flank Look at the angle. Flank, yeah. Again, it's just about upset. They take upset out of the equation. It gets so hard. Good flick back to kick things off from Vladdy. Oh, yo, you might just get taken out before the fight even really starts. Mirwin off to the side, but how do they find an angle to get away? Upset now caught between the tanks. He's speeding up. He's running for his life. He's trying to play as clean as he possibly can. The cleanse is there. The healing isn't enough. The body box is there. Upset stays standing. And KC take advantage in the exchange. Knocked back. It's power blast going. Coming in for Connor to keep him safe. And now it's Supa who's been cut out. And it's Vladdy again trying to make the difference in the fight. But everyone is so low. KC pushing up. Supa definitely wants to finish in the flash forward. Carmine Court fans coming alive. The shot down there. KC again. They find the angle, but this time they're barreling down mid. A game that felt impossible to win has turned into a miracle play from upset. KC have their eyes set on the Nexus, and they're looking to end the game right here. The blinking how far it was so damn close, but they managed to keep Upset alive. They managed to make it work. Towers falling, KC fans standing proud, getting the edge in spring, and again in summer, they'll find their first win. A huge turnaround win for KC. The positioning in those final fights for Upset was clutch. As cast as we talk about, needing those miracle moments to turn games around, but very rarely do we ever see them materialize, but that right there was one of them. Has to feel so good for this KC lineup. Again, the pressure on their shoulders is immense. The goals they have are ambitious, especially after the abysmal splits they had in winter and spring, but here in summer, they stand tall. Your player of the game, that we see on X, Kana, Vladi are upset. Think about that, you go to a viewing party for the win after two <laughs> seasons where it's been rough. And it was looking so dire. It was looking so dire. I mean, that game should have been over, but uh, great stuff. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break. More LEC when we're back. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. 